Hello everyone. So a couple of weeks ago I pulled back the carpet on my rear shelf and discovered this rather hideous looking mess. Uh, as you can see it has pretty much rusted on mainly these two pieces here. So this is the cover for the fuel tank and this is like a cross piece that goes all the way along there to form the bulkhead. Uh, there's a little bit on here as well but it doesn't seem too bad. So that one largely escaped and luckily the bits that are actually um, welded to the body the chassis are actually fine still so clearly the quality of the steel is not up to the standard of the quality of the actual chassis or maybe this has been replaced at a later stage or perhaps this was treated with some kind of paint and these weren't but whatever the reason um, as you can see the rust is pretty bad on here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace these all together, pull them out, um, these two. This one I'm going to fix up, um, just sand that back, um, and then replace them with new uh, metal bits which, I've, uh, which I'm going to paint first. I'm also going to put some paint on this as well just, just to make sure um, that it doesn't get any worse. So one of the major issues I'm going to have is that um, as you can see, these bolts that are all around here are all pretty rusted. Um, and in fact, some of these screws that hold on the cover for the petrol tank um, are actually so corroded that they've virtually disappeared completely. Um, which is a bit of a bastard because obviously I've got to get them out in order to get this plate off. Um, so I've got a uh, bolt extractor set, which I don't know whether it's going to work on the screws, but it should definitely at least work on these bolts. So the first thing I'm going to do is just spray a bit of WD-40 uh, onto them, just to try and loosen them up a little bit. So, I don't know if this is going to make any difference at all, but it's worth trying. Okay, so these are the replacement panels that I've just bought from Autolink. And what I'm going to do before I put them in is I'm going to paint them first using this um, Hammerite um, basically rust preventing paint. Um, the reason I'm using this stuff is because um, you can just spray it straight on, there's no need for an undercoat. Um, so that'll save me some time, I can just literally coat this. I might just sand this first just to get any of the loose kind of stuff off the top before I paint but basically I'm just going to spray this straight on. The other thing is that on the back of this um, there's a sound absorption panel um, and what they've done is they've just basically used these staples to hold it in place um, and really if I'm going to do this properly I need to get this off because actually under here is where corrosion starts because it gets trapped in between this um, blanket basically and the metal so I definitely need to coat that before I put this on the car otherwise I'm just going to end up with the same problem again so I'm just trying to get these little staples out but there are they're quite um, they're quite strong so I'm just going to try and use some pliers and basically try and wheedle them out Okay, so now I've got that off, these damn things don't come out easy, that's what I can say. Um, and they're also not going back in again because they're all completely bent and misshapen now. So I'm going to have to think of another method to re-secure this back on again afterwards. But for now, I'm just going to uh, paint this. I'm sure there will be plenty of people on the internet who will be critiquing my spray technique right now. Um, and quite frankly, I don't give a damn because you're not going to see this. This is literally just for protection purposes. So I'm really not too bothered about getting my technique too perfect. Just trying to get a nice even coat. One problem with doing it in silver, of course, is that I can't really see how well I've covered it. But I thought silver would look a lot nicer than um, black. 
Right, I think that will do for that side for now. I might do a second coat and see how I feel. Really, it's just for protection purposes, so it doesn't have to be too perfect. Um, yeah, there's a few paint runs, quite a lot of orange peeling, so there's a paint job. Uh, as you can say, I probably wouldn't... Um, well, I probably wouldn't commission myself to spray my paintwork, but for this it'll do. So I've just got to wait for that to dry a bit, and then I will do the other side. Um, might be tomorrow now, because it's getting a bit late and pretty cold. Okay, so while that paintwork is drying out a bit, um, I'm going to have a go at tackling some of these bolts that are rusted in there. So I've got this, which is a bolt extractor kit. Um, and basically what you do is you put this over the bolt and it's got these really kind of sharp edges inside there. Um, and what that basically does is it um, attaches to the bolt and it holds it firm so that it doesn't slip. Um, and then hopefully you can extract it, even if it's really rusty. So let's just chuck that on there. It's nice and tight. Oh, it's actually easier than I thought. Okay, so with the help of the bolt extractor, uh, I've managed to get all of these out. Those are all the rusted ones. There's some more under here and a few more down there um, under the carpet there, but they're not too bad, so I think I'll just use an ordinary ratchet. Um, but I'm not going to do that today because that involves taking out these plastic pieces and that's a bit of a mission. Um, and amazingly, I actually also managed to get the screws out of the petrol tank cover. Um, here they are there. Even though they are pretty fucked, um, I think just loosening it up with WD-40 um, was enough. So the cover is now off. There's the petrol tank underneath. Okay, so it's now the next day. As you can see, it's bright and sunny again. But it's actually a lovely winter's day today. Very nice. Anyway, I've just finished painting the other side of the main uh, insert here. And I've sanded back and painted this um, fuel line cover, which is the original one. It wasn't too badly damaged, so um, I've just sanded it back a bit and then repainted it. You can see there's a bit of pitting in there um, still, but I think it was actually okay, to be honest. But I think this has come out quite nicely. There's no paint runs on that. It looks quite smart. Just got to let it dry. Um, and I've got to turn these over and paint the other side of those once they've dried as well. Right, seatbelt towers are now off. Um, and now I can get to these last couple of bolts. And undo them. They're not very tight, so pretty easy to do. They're not quite as easy with one hand while I'm holding the camera. Right, there's the back parcel bit out and alongside the new one. And as you can see, it's in a pretty shoddy shape. And also, the eagle-eyed among you may have noticed that on my old one that I've just pulled out, it's had these two great chunks hacked out of it on both sides. Don't know why but someone has decided that that was a good idea at some point. But I mean, not a very nice job either. It's just been hacked out with, probably with a pair of tin snips, I think. So I won't really have time to do it today, but um, what I'm gonna do is just go around here and clean up all of this dirt down here. Um, sand back all these bits where it's got a bit corroded. Um, deal with this. Just paint over it, I think, with some anti-rust stuff. Um, and then, once that's done, I will put the new bits back in again over the top. Um, and the other thing I want to do is I would like to install um, two six-inch speakers. One there and one on that side there. Um, because the speakers in the doors just really aren't cutting it for me. The, um, the sound quality is pretty rubbish. Um, because what happens is the sound leaks out of the top of the doors here, which there's really not much you can do about that at all. Um, and what that ends up doing is, from your position in the driver's seat, it cancels out a lot of the bass. 
so they sound really tinny and shit basically whereas if they're mounted in here and I basically uh, find a way to kind of uh, seal this so that all the energy from the back of the speaker goes out into the boot um, I should get a much nicer purer bass sound okay so I've got a bucket of hot water there and I've just put a tiny bit of car shampoo in as well obviously it's not very good to use um, dishwashing liquid uh, on your car parts because it's got salt in it um, and it will actually make your metal corrode quicker so yeah I thought that car shampoo is probably the best because it will get the get rid of the dirt but it will also protect that paintwork in there as well okay so I've now cleaned up the back parcel shelf as you can see giving it all a good scrub and my next task is to basically go over these little bits here where there's a bit of rust forming um, as you can see in various little spots and I'm going to basically paint it with this uh, Hammerite rust protecting paint I don't need it to look perfect just want to protect it basically because I'm, the next job after this will be putting down the uh, sound absorption matting and what I don't want to happen is for the metal to just rust away underneath that. Okay, so um, it's now a week later and my paint job has dried. Uh, it's not the most beautiful job in the world. As you can see, there are some streaks in it. Um, but it doesn't really matter because it's not going to be visible. Um, and the next is going to be this layer of insulation, which I'm going to put over the whole deck. Um, for two reasons. One, to stop. Uh, well, to help absorb sound, um, and two, to help absorb vibration and noise from the road, make it quieter. So basically I'm going to put that down, and then I'm going to put a kind of layer of uh, plywood down over the top of that, basically. So basically what this stuff is, is um, a layer of bitumen with um, a foil top and it's got an adhesive back well obviously the bitumen is naturally sticky but it's got this layer of plastic on the back which you peel off and then you basically just stick it down and um, although it's, it's not that um, thick um, when combined with the layer of metal that you're adhesing, ad, adhering it to sorry, not adhesing it to um, it basically forms this dual layer which stops the metal from flexing um, and it cuts out a huge amount of vibration that way so um, yeah it's a good it's a good way of insulating spaces where you don't want to lose a lot of area um, but you do want to stiffen up the material quite a lot okay so I've been working on this for a couple of hours now and I've now covered all the surfaces with uh, this uh, absorption material um, basically I've done down in here um, where there was actually some holes that go right through to the road you could actually see the road out of them so hopefully this will make a bit of a difference to the uh, sound um, and I've also done all along the top here so because the aim is to basically completely isolate the boot space from here I've made sure that I've covered anywhere where there are any holes that lead up to the boot okay so I've been giving this whole rear parcel shelf thing a lot of thought over the last week or so um, and I've actually come to the conclusion that I think the best option is for me to reinstall this um, original piece that goes over the front um, and then basically mount the speakers in this panel so what I was originally going to do was basically use a piece of plywood across the whole back surface and then mount the speakers in the plywood. Um, but the problem is that there's quite a lot of different levels um, in the various areas on the back shelf. So a flat piece of plywood, first you won't make a good seal over the various holes and bumps and ridges. Um, and secondly, it's very difficult to cut it into the correct shapes. Um, and thirdly it's also quite thick so the plastic trim panels that go on the edge here they don't well they do fit just but then when you try and put the carpet in that's going to be a problem as well so uh, I'm going to return to the original fitting 
But what I'm going to do is, as you can hear, it's not very solid. Um, and that would basically cause resonance um, when the speakers are in there. Um, it does get a bit better when it's mounted in place. It doesn't sound quite as rattly as this, but um, even so, it's still not going to be the best surface to mount a speaker in. So what I'm going to do is put plywood on the underside here um, to basically support it. And I'll basically um, probably glue it in place, I think, is going to be the easiest. Um, or maybe screw in from the top. Um, and put another layer of plywood on the bottom bit as well, just to kind of strengthen it and make it a bit kind of more solid. Now the one issue that I noticed is at the back there, you can see where I've got my camera uh, or my phone light in the back there, there's actually a gap and if you look through here basically you can see all the way through so that means that there's a gap there um, which is going to mean that sound from the base of the speaker is going to travel around there and come out from behind here um, and that's going to affect um, the bass response of the speaker because um, what you want to do is you want to basically make sure that the rear of the speaker is sealed off as much as possible from the front of the speaker. So what I'm going to have to do is uh, basically seal that off. So what I've got is a bit more of this um, uh, matting stuff that I put all over the back here um, and I'm basically just going to paste it over the gap there. Um, to basically seal it off. But before I do that, what I'm going to also do is I'm going to get some of that uh, insulation material and I'm going to pack it down inside this gap here so that it just minimizes any resonance um, that could occur in there. Okay, so it's a little difficult to see, but I've now packed the whole space full of this insulation material, which is just made out of recycled plastic. Um, it's quite cheap to buy and it's also very um, absorbent so it makes a good sound absorber. Um, I've made sure that it's not snagging on the seat belt so that's all good um, and it's packed all the way through to the back um, where the gap starts here. Okay so it was a little bit of a fiddle but I managed to get it in the end. You can see it starts here and it goes all the way back to where the wheel arch is there. Um, and it goes all the way up to the top and all the way down across the bottom. It may not be an absolute 100% airtight fit, but it should stop the majority of the sound waves pushing through. Anything that does bleed through will hopefully be absorbed by that material in the gap there. So that's pretty much job done for that side. Now I've just got to do the same on this side. So basically we are now ready to uh, basically put the holes for the speakers in this panel. Um, and then basically fit the panel in there um, along with the amplifier which is going to go in this space here um, and obviously use more of this padding in here just to dampen the sound down further. So I did some research and this was the setup I decided on for the speakers. Um, so I've got these uh, Infinity uh, component speakers which come with two woofers and two tweeters and a crossover um, between the two. Um, uh, these speakers are actually made by Harman Kardon, which is the, the hi-fi brand, so they are pretty well respected. Um, they're actually installed in a lot of high-end cars like BMW, Mercedes, etc. So um, good quality speakers, they're quite expensive, but I think really it's, it's worth paying a bit more for good quality um, components. And then for the amp, um, I found this small 300-watt uh, um, amplifier which is, um, it's actually a four channel amp, but I'm only going to be using two of the channels. Um, but it does mean that if I do want to expand later on and add some more kind of speakers into the system, I've got two extra channels that I can use. Um, it's 300 watts uh, RMS, which doesn't sound like a huge amount, but considering we're just powering these mid-range um, woofers and tweeters, um, and because they'll be right behind my head as well, um, don't actually need a huge amount of power. So this should be more than enough. Um, and also the small size means that it can fit into the space um, underneath the parcel shelf. Okay, so I have now cut the holes in the uh, metal part of the shelf. Um, I didn't film myself doing it because, well, because I broke pretty much every single safety rule in the book and I don't want to give people bad ideas. Um, suffice to say, when you're cutting metal, 
you have to have safety goggles, make sure you're in a well ventilated area and don't have any flammable materials next to you because uh, the sparks can easily set things alight. But anyway, I have successfully cut the holes. Um, unfortunately, the paint has been a bit damaged, I think by the heat. Um, so I'm gonna have to just touch that up again um, before I put everything in place. Um, I've also now cut these boards, which are gonna be uh, used for additional um, strengthening underneath, um, which should helpfully, hopefully stop vibrations. So basically the speakers will hold into that um, and this will just act as an additional layer of insulation. Um, and I'm going to basically glue it down um, and screw it into place so, and then put um, insulation material in between as well. So it won't rattle um, and it'll hopefully keep things nice and solid there. Okay, so I stuck the two boards down on the inside uh, of this uh, shelf here um, and then I took it down and tried it in the car and I realized that the top one just doesn't fit at all because actually the fuel tank comes right up to basically the edge of where the speaker hole is on this side um, and there's various other bits and pieces underneath the shelf which basically stop this from working. So I'm going to remove that. Uh, and instead what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cover the inside of this with the um, soft mastic um, insulation instead. Okay, so I've now put all the insulating material on the top side um, of the shelf. I've also run some beading around the edges, which is just this um, spongy stuff with a uh, adhesive backing. And the idea is that that's, that should block up most of the holes um, between the areas where the screws uh, locate. So hopefully that will isolate the sound quite nicely. Right, so I've now mounted the speakers into the shelf. Um, it was a very fiddly job. Um, I probably should have done the speaker mounting first and then put in the insulation afterwards because as you can see, these screws have gone through the insulation and it covers them with the sticky black mastic stuff, which is a real pain. Anyway, they're in and I've now mounted the amplifier as well. Um, I've been down to the car to check whether it fits and it seems to fit okay. So now I have to wire up the amplifier to the speakers um, and I've also discovered that I need to put a layer of uh, the um, this stuff, this spongy stuff down here as well just to seal this bottom bit off as well. Okay so I've now got the speakers in and they're all wired up. I'm just testing them using a um, battery charger 12 volt thing that I've got. Um, they don't sound too bad to be honest but of course they'll sound a lot better once they're all sealed in place. Okay so it's the next weekend now and I have brought out the parcel shelf and I'm now busy wiring in um, the various cables so we have the main audio cables which are going into the head unit which is there um, we've also got this power cable which goes to the battery at the back and we have this smaller um, control cable which is going to turn the amp on uh, whenever the head unit is on. So there's a cable for that going around to the head unit as well. And uh, I've also recruited my glamorous assistant Rachel. Hello glamorous assistant, oh I wasn't pointing at you. Hello glamorous assistant Rachel. Rachel is currently sanding down some little bits of plywood that we made uh, to go into the gap on either side of the parcel shelf. 
Uh, then the next job is to stuff these tunnels with insulation, which is there. Um, so we're going to be doing that next. Um, and then basically put the, the uh, front of the parcel shelf back on, screw everything in place, and that will pretty much be job done, apart from um, sorting out the carpet which goes over the top, um, which we'll probably have to cut um, around the edges of, the edges of the speakers because um, unfortunately you can't leave them under the carpet because the carpet has a layer of uh, plastic insulation under it so it would affect the sound quality. Okay, so speakers are now fully installed. The panel has been uh, fully bolted in. Um, feels nice and solid um, and uh, doesn't seem to be too, in, too many rattles or vibrations at all. Uh, the speakers are nicely solidly installed. Um, there's no gaps around the edges of them. So it's a pretty good job, I think. And I've installed the tweeters onto the top of the seat belt turrets. Um, they're basically just taped in with double-sided adhesive. Um, but behind here, I've added a uh, basic a connection point. So if I do need to remove these turrets, I can just disconnect the tweeter and pull the whole thing out uh, without too much trouble. Okay, so the carpet is now installed, uh, as you can see there. And, um, well, it didn't fit perfectly. Um, I did have to adjust some of the holes, unfortunately, at this end, which I think has something to do with the fact that this is probably pulled slightly too far down. But it looks fine. I might replace the carpet at some point with a better one um, and redo this better, but it's fine for now. Um, the sound sounds good. Um, no problems with that. Sounds nice and meaty, plenty of bass doesn't sound distorted or tinny. Um, there's a tiny bit of a rattle, unfortunately. But you can only really hear it when the sound is very loud, so uh, I'm going to just leave it as it is. So the eagle-eyed among you may have noticed that during the course of this video the seasons have changed from winter to summer and back to winter again. <laughs> and yeah, this job has taken me an entire year to finish. Um, just been a very busy year for me, lots of stuff going on so I haven't had much time to work on the car. Um, but finally got it done now uh, so I can enjoy the new sound system and uh, yeah, I might uh, tidy some things up in the future but for now. I think uh, job done. So thanks very much for watching and uh, see you again on the next video.